Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie and today it's a cold day. Luckily it's not a blustery cold day otherwise you probably wouldn't be able to hear me. It is the end of October and we've already had our first frost and we have some pretty heavy freezes coming up. It's going to hit 19 degrees sometime a little bit later this week and now I am grappling with the issue that many fig growing addicts, I mean many fig growing responsible gardeners, addicts, have and that's how do I protect my fig in northern climates. Now I live in Utah which is technically a zone 7 if you look it up on the zone maps but I would not have said we were anywhere higher than a zone 5 around five years ago. We had really cold winters that would get below zero degrees and it was cold. It would get cold. I think the coldest I've ever experienced here is probably negative 10. So they, the winters can get really cold, but the last five years, which is most people's most recent memories, we've had some really nice zone seven winters. So I need to be able to pr protect my figs for whatever will happen. Now, a lot of people in Utah grow their figs without any covering. And what happens is they die to the ground and then they grow back up from the roots and start producing figs around July. Now, the problem with that is that the figs do not have time to ripen, generally speaking, unless you have a late fall freeze like we have this year, and then you'll get some of the figs to ripen. What I am looking for is as many figs as I can get. If, if I'm gonna invest in fig trees, and especially as many figs as I have actually invested in, and I have more coming, I definitely want to be able to get figs. So I'm going to go through and show you what I've done to this point already because I actually did protect some of my figs before we had that first freeze. These figs are on the south side of my house, which is warmer, so I wasn't as concerned about them freezing. So I left them so I could show you how I cover them. So let's go see the ones that I did previously. Now this is my front yard and this is my no-name fig that was given to me as a cutting from a friend who took it from her father's yard. I think you had it from her grandfather or something like that. But anyway, it's been grown in Utah for years. It's very highly likely it's a brown turkey, but I am not sure. It's a good tasting fig and it's its first year in the ground and I did actually have some figs ripen on it. But I decided I really want to protect this fig because I would like it to be a shade from the sunshine and a place where I can snack on figs while I'm sitting in my front yard, which I do quite a bit. This is a very pleasant place for me to sit. Now I'm gonna show you the process of how I cover it um, when I do the figs on the south side of my house. But as you can see, it's basically two cages. The middle cage is stuffed with straw. I do put a top over it. This is a top I actually had, the wind has been blowing it off. So I did have to put a strap over the top of it to hold it down in the wind. But the top can come off and I can fold the plastic down and leave the cover open in the top on warmer winter days. Now, this comes into play more during the springtime. And the reason I do that in the spring is so that the fig will actually come out of dormancy a little bit early. And then if we get late spring frosts, I can cover the fig back up without too many problems. And when I said late spring frosts, Utah is notorious for very late spring frosts. We had a spring frost that went down to 20 degrees, and I think that was the end of April near the beginning of May this year. And we've been known to have snow in June. So I leave the outside coverings on top of, on the figs and the tops open during the spring until all threat of frost is passed. Now back here is gonna be an experiment. This fig right here, the one that is not covered, was supposed to be an improved Celeste, but it came to me as definitely a Rondé Bordeaux. But before I knew it was a Rondé Bordeaux, I did order one and that one is planted and covered right here. So we're gonna have them side by side, one covered and one not. This one is covered the exact same way as the fig in the front with two layers, the middle layer being straw. And we're going to let this one die back to the ground and see what happens this winter. It's its second year. We actually had fruit that ripened. There's some down here. Let's see if we can see any. They're not soft, so they're not ripe enough to eat, but I'm, and I doubt they will continue to ripen in this weather. We're definitely starting to see cold damage. So the, this fig is going to go dormant here. I'm not going to prune it back at all. And we're just going to see what happens over the winter. We're going to do the same with this fig. 
This is a Chicago Hardy, which is the same as my fig in the front. And this is what happens when they die to the ground. This was not covered last year. It did die to the ground. And these are the size of the figs that we got, which definitely did not have time to ripen. So we are going to let this one also die to the ground because I, and then we're going to give away this one. And if this one survives, we're also going to give away the Rondé Bordeaux for next year to somebody who can use it. Because I want several different varieties. I don't want to be repeating varieties in my landscape. This one right here has been my smallest fig and the one that's had the most difficult time growing, but this one's a Negron, or another name for it is Violette de Bordeaux. So this is definitely a keeper. Now, when I talk about the dilemma of protecting figs in Utah, what I want to talk about is when do the figs go dormant? Now, realistically, I should not be protecting my figs until they've gone dormant. I should not cut back my figs until they've gone dormant. But in Utah, I haven't found very many winters, especially in the recent past, where our plants have had enough time to go dormant between where it starts getting cool enough to turn, have the leaves turn color and the first heavy freeze where the leaves die and fall off the tree. It's actually becoming a problem with some trees because it's weakening them. The leaves, while they're still green, will freeze and just fall off the tree. So my fig trees, if I wait to cover them until, until they actually go dormant, we've hit 28 degrees several nights in a row and they still are not going dormant. The leaves are starting to look a little worse for wear, so I'm hoping that they are just on that point of going dormant. But if I waited until they were completely dormant and all the leaves had fallen off, we will have hit the 19 degree temperatures and we'll start seeing branch die back. And I know that because that's what I did the first year. I, was, I didn't realize at what temperature the leaves would freeze. We hit 20 degrees. And by the time I covered the fig tree, the branches had already been killed off to the ground. So, so having the open top is kind of my compromise. It can still get the cold weather, but it keeps it a little bit warmer. So maybe the leaves will go dormant and uh, we won't get the branch die back. And it really worked well last year. Now, the other problem is you're not supposed to cut back trees until they go dormant. Now, this tree right here was huge just a few days ago when I first covered it. There was no way I was gonna be able to completely cover the whole thing and have it the size it was. So I did have to heavily cut it back while it was not dormant. And let me show you all the cuts that I made. Now, whether or not this is a huge detriment, we'll find out next year, but I did have to cut off some big branches. So we cut off that branch. We cut off several branches over here. We cut all the smaller branches back to the inside and this is what was left. Now this fig tree did produce a ton of figs and most of them ripened. We still do have a few left over that are not going to ripen, but I was very, very pleased with the results of how I covered it last year. So now you can kind of see the structure that I, that I make. I pound rebar into the ground and then for these taller fig trees, you know, I don't do it for all the fig trees, but for the taller ones, I will put the PVC pipe that I use to stake my tomatoes over the top of that rebar. And then on the interior, this is my interior cage, I tie the fig back so it's as much inside that interior cage as possible. For example, right here, I have a few branches to tuck back in, so I'm gonna tuck those in. Now, generally speaking, I use whatever materials I have to tie the fig trees back, but I didn't, and I, but I prefer the burlap wrap. Now I didn't have enough burlap wrap, so I'm just using some string right here. It's a very tough string and that's just gonna work just fine. The strings are more rubbing up against the poles than they are the actual branches of the fig tree. So we're just gonna pull this branch right back inside. Pull this one inside. And now I think we have all of the branches inside. Now, one other thing I wanted to say really quick for those who are inexperienced like I was last year and the year before, definitely wear long sleeves and gloves. The sap on the fig trees is very caustic and you will itch like you've never itched before. Some people actually even get welts if they get the sap on them. And with all of the work on the fig tree that you're gonna to need to be doing to protect it, you're definitely gonna be getting sap on yourself. So wear protection so you don't have any bare skin showing. 
So the next thing that I do is I am going to wrap the inside of this first cage, this, you know, this middle cage, with a protective layer of insulation. Now, I did go out and spend a bit of money, and you can, do, you can actually do it with anything that you want. You can do a middle layer of plastic, but I actually went out and spent a bit of money and got this insulation. Because if we have a zone five winter, I really want my fig trees protected. It's a little overkill, and it is definitely more expensive, but these will last for years. I have some that I used on the other fig trees that have been used for at least two years, and they're absolutely fine, no issues whatsoever. So this is a long-term solution, definitely not the most necessary one, but it's one that I like. You can use plastic, you can use burlap, um, whatever you'd like to use. So we're going to wrap the inside layer with the insulation and see how that looks. Now I'm going to make sure that this insulation goes all the way to the ground and is on the ground uh, by the time we're done wrapping the tree. So I got the lower half covered. We just tied it with one of the green stretchy, you know, the garden green stretchy tape. It doesn't need to be tied down too tight because we're going to be packing straw around this. But now we're to a, a little conundrum. I did buy a shorter variety of the, of the insulation and I have enough that I can cover this up higher. Now I'm wondering if I should just leave it without covering that top part. The top part will be covered in plastic. I'll put a plastic top on it but I want to be able to leave enough of it exposed that it can continue to go dormant. And then in the spring, I can open up the top part of the covering and let it come out of dormancy. So I think this year, I'm just gonna experiment with not covering this top portion. We're gonna stuff it with hay in just a second, but the hay is only gonna go to about this level right here. So I think this probably may have been a purchase I didn't need to do. So let's get the outside white, so let's get the outside chicken wire around it. So the, the chicken wire is going to, is meant to help contain the hay and have an area to wrap the, the plastic around. So that's the next thing that we're gonna put on this. Well, now we've got the interior cage done, which consists of the insulation that's wrapped around the tree on both of our figs here. And we've got the chicken wire up. Now all that's left is to stuff them with hay and to put the plastic around them. Now, if you notice, I left quite a bit of this fig hanging, hanging out over the top. Now, I think that'll be okay. This is like, you know, this is still just an experiment for me. This is still testing. Some of it was hanging out last year. We'll put the plastic all the way over the top and if it dies back on the top branches, that's fine. The interior of it, is going to be insulated by the hay and the insulation. So I think it should be fine. So let's get these stuffed with hay and show you what it looks like. Now they are filled with straw. Now I think I said hay before. I don't use the alfalfa hay, I use straw. The next spring, I will use this straw to mulch my garden beds. Last year, I spread it all out on my lawn. I had several bags of leaves left over, mixed those leaves in with the straw and mowed them up with my mower and threw them over my garden beds. And that was a really good mulch. So that's what will happen with the straw next spring. But right now, it's going to be used as, a, as insulation. So last of all, I just need to wrap this with plastic and then I'll be done. So here's the final product. We've got two more fig trees, the final two fig trees protected for the winter. Now I will open up the top of these fig trees and fold the plastic down when it starts getting warm enough for the figs to break dormancy. And then if we get the threat of late frost in the spring, then I'll just fold them back off. And probably the beginning of June when there's really little chance of having another frost, I'll take, the, I'll take everything off and use the straw for mulch. Now, before we end, I just wanted to show you my favorite site. I live right up against the back of the Wasatch Mountains. This is Mount Mahogany, which is at the base of Mount Timpanogos. And it is absolutely gorgeous this time of evening. And we still have flowers blooming, even though we've hit in the mid twenties.
Now we have another project done, another thing to tick off my list, and I am really looking forward to a little bit of a rest this winter time. And I'd love to hear what you guys are doing this time of year. If you have fruit trees that you're protecting, some that are maybe a little bit tender for your climate, I'd love to hear how you do it. And I hope my videos are helpful to you. If my videos are helpful to you, please leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe, share them with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.